The fourth and final season of 13 Reasons Why has officially dropped on Netflix. The show that had everyone talking on social media and stirred up a lot of conversations about mental health has finally come to an end. And we need to talk about everything that went down. Hey guys, it's Denise Salcedo and today everything is all about 13 Reasons Why season four. And be warned because I will be sharing spoilers throughout this entire video, so consider this your friendly warning. So first of all, I gotta say episodes maybe one through four slash five, I thought were kind of boring. I wasn't really feeling it. I was a little bit bummed out with how the show kicked off. Now I get it. They were planting the seeds, building toward things, but I did think they had to get to the exciting parts a lot faster. There was a lot of things that I didn't like at the top of the season, but with that being said, I thought episodes 6 through 10 were good and kept me interested where I was actually excited to click and watch the next episode. And to be honest, I think the reason why I continued watching this season was mainly because I had already watched seasons one, two, and three. And obviously I wanted to come here and talk about it. And I really wanted to know what was actually gonna happen with the entire cast. So here we go, let's dive into it. Season four, final season of 13 Reasons Why. Right off the bat, the show kicks off at someone's funeral, but we don't know who. Then we are taken back six months prior. The whole gang is ready to graduate high school and go off to college. They aren't as close as they used to be, and some are handling events from the prior season a lot better than the others. Basically, the first few episodes are all about how Clay has gone bananas. He's full-blown crazy, no longer sane. Then we discover that someone knows that Monty was framed for the murder of Bryce after graffiti is found on the school. However, we see Clay do bad things and act irrationally. He comes close to raping an unconscious girl. He's seen the ghost of Bryce and Monty. Clay begins to receive all of these mysterious phone calls and they tell him that they have dirt on him, basically saying that they know what he did to Monty. And because of that, Clay starts doing whatever they want him to do. But in the end, it is discovered that it was the football team that was messing with him. But after Clay reacts like a guilty murderer, the team led by Diego realized that Clay really is hiding something, therefore confirming their suspicions about Monty being framed. However, Diego isn't the only one trying to figure out who really killed Bryce. Winston, Monty's lover who was with him the night Bryce was killed, goes to Liberty High to try and find out the truth. Hey, so personally, I wasn't a fan of any of this, mainly because I thought Clay got really, 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 really annoying and I I had zero interest in what was happening to him. Obviously, I knew that he was being driven mad and all of that, and I got it, but I felt that the showrunners kept it going for too long to where it dragged. It was kind of like, okay, I get it. Clay has gone mad. We get it. Let's move on to something else. Also, one of the other things that I didn't like was that we would see something interesting happen, but then all of a sudden, it ended up being Clay's warped imagination. So so you couldn't really distinguish what was real and what was fake. So that kind of that kind of irritated me a little bit because I was like, okay, something finally interesting is happening in this season. Well, then it turns out that it isn't even real. So because of that, I was not excited over the first few episodes. I actually thought they played the first few episodes too safe and it was a slow, slow start. Clay gets even worse. The senior camping trip goes very bad and the entire group begins seeing and hallucinating things. Meanwhile, some of it is real. I was not a fan of the camping episode. Again, I just kind of felt that this episode was too sci-fi for me. Like 13 Reasons Why had a more realistic approach, you know, the first seasons. And I kind of felt like this sort of became really unrealistic. The camping episode, along with the blood bloody shower scene when the jocks, the football team plays the prank on Clay. Uh, those two scenes I just felt were so unrealistic that it kind of just made me not interested in the show and what was happening. Um, so yeah, that was my criticism on that. 
And the season finally starts picking up when they have the shooter drill. I thought this episode was really messed up, mainly because I don't agree with false drills where the students aren't warned. And when it was discovered that it was just a drill, I thought that was a big waste of time. However, after the drill, Clay goes off on the principal and the police for exercising the drill and making them believe it. And he ends up assaulting the law enforcement officer and he is taken down and taken into a psych ward after. Clay eventually does escape the hospital and after this we see a school riot the students protest the fact that there is too much police presence and high security at the school and the principal's car gets set on fire that is when we discover that clay is really messed up it turns out that he is the one who set the car on fire did the graffiti broke cameras at the school and was responsible for the camping trip scare so basically we find out that he does awful things and doesn't even remember them and then when it came to the riot episode um, I kind of felt, I don't know, it felt really strange watching it, mainly because of everything that's been going on in our real life. So I do have to say that how crazy it is that 13 Reasons Why had a riot included in their storyline and then we have a real life riot. Um, I just felt that was like too like coincidental. Obviously it was a coincidence, but still it was hard to watch personally because you know I'm the person that's been watching all of the videos that have been posted up about the riots. So then seeing the riots on 13 Reasons Why, it was hard to watch and I just, I don't know, I don't really even know how I felt about this entire thing. Fast forward to prom night. It all feels like things might end on a happy note. But instead, Justin passes out at prom and ends up being taken to the hospital and being diagnosed with AIDS. This was the saddest part of the whole series because Justin dies. The scenes with Justin in the hospital, they were really, really, really sad. So I thought the moments that Justin had with Clay when he was saying his goodbyes was sad. And then the one that he had with Jessica, oh, I felt so bad because I was really rooting for them. I wanted them to have their happy ending. And I liked Justin Justin's character. Um, but here's the thing, though. I think the reason why he was the one that had to die was because at the end of the day the gang covered up a murder right so I almost feel like if they had a picture perfect happy ending that maybe the viewers would be like well did they really deserve that happy ending so with them losing somebody like Justin in their lives it's kind of like okay well you know what they suffered and they suffered enough um yes they did something wrong but look at what they just lost so I almost feel like that had to happen and obviously we knew they weren't going to kill off Clay or Jessica so it had to be a character that we you know know felt something for that we liked so that it could hurt us the viewers just as much as the characters on TV so because of that um, I did like this these scenes and I also did like how Clay's parents they loved Justin like he was their own I thought that was really nice like seeing um, seeing them all mourn for him it was just sad though especially right now like anything that I see sad in a TV show it just hits harder with everything that's going on in our real lives in the end, we see the group graduate and move on, and even though the sheriff does discover that Alex killed Bryce, he lets it go and buries the records. Hannah's tapes from season one are also buried by the group. But now let's talk about the main characters individually. I already said that Clay's character was annoying to me for more than half of the season. I really didn't start re-liking him again until the prom episode, so basically the end. Although I do like that his character suffered the most in terms of he had really high morals and was always the good kid at the start, and he just completely unraveled after every bad thing that happened because he did care about his friends. Jessica has always been my favorite characters from the show. I love how much growth she has had. She went from being a minor character to being one of the stars of the show. I think she's a great actress and overall loved her entire storyline. Again though, I was sad that she didn't get her happy ending with Justin. And Justin, I was so sad when I realized he would be the one dying. I always liked his character and felt bad for him. He never got annoying and I felt bad that at the start of the season he was the one that was really trying to get his life together, but then it all just fell apart. 
But if they were going to kill anyone off, I guess it had to be him. I figured it wouldn't be Clay or Jessica, and it had to be someone the audience liked, like him or Alex. And speaking of Alex, even though it kind of came out of nowhere, we discover in the season that he is gay. And he kind of ends up having the best love story, or at least the happiest ending. We see him kiss Zach, which begins the process of him questioning his sexuality. But it's when he meets Winston, and they share a few intimate moments, that it's clear he prefers guys. However, he ends up falling in love with a football player named Charlie and Charlie immediately became one of my favorite characters. I thought he was loving and sweet and kind of perfect for Alex. He was always there when Alex needed him and he accepted him for who he is. Then with Zach, I didn't really feel his character played a big role in this specific season. He was there but I don't think his role was as pivotal as the others. And the same goes with Ani. She was brought in last season, and this season she was gone for about half of it. I did like her friendship with Jessica, and I'm glad she didn't end up with Clay because I never thought they actually fell for each other. I felt it was more lust than anything. I think their personalities worked more as friends. Tyler, to who this day had the worst scene ever on 13 Reasons Why. Every time I think about what happened to him, it just breaks my heart, makes me angry, and makes me loathe Monty all over again. So I really Really wanted a happy ending for him. He was kind of just there in the season. The group was suspicious of him leaking the truth, but he never did. So he proved to be a true friend. Then I've always liked Tony on the show. He was always a good and loyal friend. I like that he became a fighter and ended up getting a scholarship. Then Winston. I went back and forth on him. I liked him. I disliked him. And then I re-liked him in the end. He wanted the truth about who really killed Bryce since he knew it wasn't Monty. And Alex did confess the truth to him which was good. Winston was the one who didn't get a happy ending though. He was already heartbroken over Monty and then Alex broke his heart again. I love the scene towards the end when Winston confesses that he still loves Alex. It actually made me sad that he didn't find the love that he was looking for. There was also Diego. I also went back and forth with his character. I liked him, then he annoyed me, then he irritated me, but then I liked him again. I thought his heart was in the right place, trying to figure out what happened to his friend. And at first, I didn't know if he was using Jessica or not, but I liked when he realized that Jessica's heart belonged to Justin. And a minor character added was Monty's sister, Estella. She was the most pure of the show, and I liked her. I thought the scene when she was on the phone with her mom during the shooting drill was really sad. And I'm happy that she and Tyler hit it off, even though I wasn't expecting it, considering what her brother did to Tyler. So there you go. Overall, I personally enjoyed the second portion of this season finale for 13 Reasons Why. And at the end of the day, I would still recommend the show to new viewers who have haven't watched it at all because it did get me to stick around for seasons one, two, three, and four. So because of that, I will still recommend the show. I still think that the best seasons were the first two, especially the first one, um, were my personal favorites. And I know that I felt impacted by those episodes and those seasons. So because of that, I still recommend this show. The show finale, though, I thought was decent. I wasn't completely blown or like I didn't have the like <gasps> moment. I didn't have that. So I will just say that it was a decent finale. It wasn't anything surprising. And that is my 13 reasons why season four recap, review, reaction, whatever you want to call this video. Um, go ahead and let me know in the comments section what you guys thought about seasons one through four, season four, the season finale or the finale. Um, let me know what you guys thought. What characters did you love? What characters did you not love? What scenes did you like? Which ones did you not like? Whatever you felt, go ahead and share them in the comments section below. Plus, I was also thinking about this. If you've never been to high school and you watch this show and you just happen to be like in middle school or something, just know high school is not this bad. It's not this dramatic and it's not this scary, okay? Or at least in my experience, I did not have a high school experience like 13 Reasons Why. So just a major heads up on that. Other than that, please show this video some love. Please show me the some love and give this video a like. And if you wanna see more TV reviews, recaps, whatever, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna chat more with me about about 13 Reasons Why or anything else, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or on Instagram at underscore Denise Salcedo. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone.